Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Lori Mickelson and I pastor the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chetwin. He is risen. He is risen indeed. This makes it a good morning. No, this makes it a great morning. And every morning, no matter what circumstances we may find ourselves in, will continue to be a great morning. As believers in the saving blood of Jesus Christ, this is a song we can sing each and every morning that we're alive. Now I know this past year has been a year of upheaval and difficulty way beyond anything that we could have imagined. I'm not even sure that this message you will hear will be on Easter morning. Usually a minister as a ministerial group we bring you the Easter messages as a group where we can hear all of the pastors in one service. This year once again things are very different. But the Easter message is vitally important every day of every year. It is not confined to the calendar on the wall. The Easter message is about the love of God for all people. The Easter message, there's always going to be someone out there who hears for the first time about the sacrifice Christ made and will make a decision to follow him. So the time, the date, they aren't important. The message is important. And the message, the call to accept Christ as a personal savior, gets out to the world that so badly needs to hear it. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for your message of salvation. We thank you for the ultimate sacrifice made by Jesus Christ for the cleansing us from sin. Open our ears to hear your message and our hearts to accept your gift of salvation. Help us become the true messengers of this good news for all people and to live our lives as true ambassadors in the world around us. Create in us a humble spirit and a servant's heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good Friday is over. Christ has been crucified. He was beaten and bruised and hung on the cross on a hill outside Jerusalem. Oh, the disciples had been there when he was arrested, but they fled to the sidelines following his arrest. Peter stuck around for a bit, but even brash Peter, who had followed to the courtyard, denied even knowing Jesus when questioned by those sitting around waiting for the verdict. The only disciple who was present at the foot of the cross was John, who stood with Jesus' mother as they watched and witnessed the gruesome event. The book of Luke tells us in Luke 23, verse 49, but Jesus' friends, including the woman, the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Stood at a distance. The crowd that had met Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and sang their praises had turned their praises to shouts of, crucify him, crucify him, just days later. The crowds watched and the leaders scoffed. The soldiers mocked him, but there was a thief that was crucified next to Jesus who met Jesus that day. His plea and Jesus' answer is recorded in Luke 23, verse 42. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. That thief on the cross accepted the gift of salvation that Christ offered, and that day was Easter for him. One would think that was the end of the whole story, but that was just the end of one chapter. The Pharisees got their way, the man was dead, problem solved. But guess what? Sunday's coming. Luke 24, verses 1 to 12. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. 
Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings, and then he went home again, wondering what had happened. There had been no time to prepare Jesus' body for burial when they had taken him down from the cross. So the Galilean women went to the tomb after the Sabbath day with all the spices and the perfumes that were required. These women couldn't do great things for Jesus. They weren't permitted to stand before the Jewish high council or the Roman governor and testify on his behalf. But this was one job the women could do. <coughs> they had stayed at the cross when most of the disciples had fled, and they got ready to anoint their Lord's body. And they were devoted to Jesus. They went to the tomb to prepare the body for burial, not expecting the empty tomb because of Jesus being resurrected. They didn't remember. They had forgotten what Jesus had told them and only looked at what had happened and not seen what was about to take place. Max Lucado wrote, the stone was moved not for Jesus, but for the women. Not so Jesus could get out, but so the women could see in. Come see what I have done. And they were the first to hear about the resurrection. The angels reminded the women that Jesus had predicted all of this. And what is the first thing that they did? So they rushed back from the tomb to tell the 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened messengers with the good news. I stand here thinking, where have I heard this scenario before? Think back to the time of the birth of Christ. The shepherds were first told about the birth of the Messiah, and what did they do? They left their flocks and rushed to find the Christ child lying in a manger, and they told everybody that they met about the event. The first people to hear the good news about Christ's birth and death and resurrection were people who were marginalized. They were way down on the social scale, yet they were the first to hear these messages. Why not the Pharisees and the scholars? Why not the rich and the famous? There's a lot to be said about studying God's word, and it is important. But the Pharisees and the scholars of the day were trying to create a belief that lined up with what they wanted. It was a way to wealth and prosperity. Doesn't that sound familiar? Why not the rich and famous? Well, wealth and fame require a great deal of effort and time. People get sidetracked. These messengers of good news were focused. They were focused on the message, He is risen, He is risen indeed. So how was this message received? But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings, and then he went home again, wondering what had happened. People who hear about the resurrection for the first time may need some time before they can understand this amazing narrative. You'll notice the first response, the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. It couldn't be possible. These men were disciples. They had walked and talked and eaten with Jesus for approximately three years. They had seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, yet they still couldn't completely understand. It just couldn't be. Or maybe, like Peter, they had to check it out. This gave Peter a lot of things to think about. He ran to the tomb. Ran. He needed to see it for himself. Was it possible? Maybe. But he ran. Then he went home again, wondering what happened. He needed time to think. He had denied Christ three times that fateful day following Christ's arrest. Jesus knew it. He knew it. What consequences would that bring? Would he still be accepted by the Savior? Could he be forgiven? Ah, Peter, how could you question all of that? The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the central fact in church history. This is what the Christian church is built on. Oh, there are other religious religions that have strong ethical systems that believe in paradise and the afterlife. There are other faiths that have scripture, but only Christianity has a God who became human, literally died for his people, and was raised again in power and glory to rule his church forever. Had Jesus just died and was buried, he would have been like all the other religious leaders. The world could come to say there is no difference. He would be just like Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, and Joseph Smith, just to name a few. But the graves of these leaders are all occupied. We don't worship a grave of bones, but rather an empty tomb of blessing. 
Why? Be Jesus of Calvary is the Jesus of the empty tomb, and he's the giver and creator, the Lord of life, and as such, he has defeated death. He has put death to death. We Christians love the cross. The cross is a symbol of God's love for us, that his son Jesus and the Lord Jesus went to that cross and died for each one of our sins. Hallelujah. Thank you. I do not want to forget what Jesus did on that cross, but if your faith never moves past the cross and onto the resurrection, your faith dwells in death rather than life. Don't get stuck on the tragedy of the cross and forget the triumph of the resurrection. Jesus teaches us that he laid down his life for us. John 10, 17 to 18. The reason the Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. Jesus laid down his life for each one of us, but it can't stop there. If he had died and not been resurrected, we too would have died in our sins. Appreciate the cross and all that it stands for. But remember that Jesus on the third day, just like he said, was resurrected, which gives us victory over the grave because of his resurrection. We are resurrected to life and the sting of death has no hold on us. If it was up to us, we would fall short. This life would be the best we could have. But because of the cross and the resurrection, we can have eternity with the Lord and the best is still to come. Jesus on the cross has changed our focus from current events to the future. Those women were focused on current events. They went to the tomb to prepare a body for burial of someone that they loved. They were shaken by the events of the past three days, his betrayal, beating, and death. We easily get shaken by current events and forget what the Lord has told us in his word. He told them that he would be resurrected. We can be so wrapped up in the events of man that we miss the events of God. Let me tell you something. The cross is messy and a lot of people don't like to talk about it. Without the cross, without his death, without his resurrection, there is no redemption. That sin is messy and the bloodshed on Calvary is the precious blood of Christ. What can wash away those sins? nothing but Jesus' blood. I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus to lay his life down for each one of us, but I'm especially glad that my Savior was resurrected to sit on the throne of God forever and ever, and that he had me in mind as he did it. The cross is a beautiful symbol of God's love for each of us. Don't look for Jesus ever again to be buried in the tomb. He's not there. This morning we're not together worshiping, but God is speaking to all of us right now. If you do not know the risen Savior, today you can. What death cannot do is keep a believer in the grave. Up from the grave he arose. And so with the same power that resurrected Jesus, we can be resurrected to life. Jesus was nailed on that cross, and on that cross is every sin that you need forgiveness for. Do you know Jesus? If not, this morning you can know him. I would ask you invite him into your life. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. You believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and was resurrected. That is the gospel message. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you are saved. You are born again believer and will spend eternity with him. Amen. Amen.